At Summer NAMM 2019, I wanted to make a different type of video that's typically done. I wanted to go in depth with philosophy and why certain pieces of gear were created. I wanted to go into the application and how this will change the way that we record or mix. Okay, I'm here hanging out with Jonathan Little of Little Labs, and I want him to kind of walk us through how people like to use some of this equipment, specifically the PCP. I think some of this stuff is really cool. I'm fascinated by how this stuff would get used. Okay, so why don't we start with like a simple guitar splitter? Okay, as a simple guitar splitter, uh, it's very simple. There's three outputs on this, and each output, what's, what comes out of that output, which is an instrument level, instrument impedance output, that's transformer isolated. And if you're using it just as a guitar splitter, you would select bam, 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 and you'd come out three different guitar amps, if you like. Or, or also, you also have a line level direct out that comes automatically off the instrument output. That brings that instrument level to a plus four balanced professional level signal that you can send out to any professional piece of equipment. And if you want it, you can send it that direction, feed it back in and select A, which is an XLR input. And I hope this doesn't get too confusing here. But that way, you'd be going through the pro gear back in and then out to your guitar amp. So let's say you have an 1176, it allows you to use that 1176 as a guitar pedal type device or a guitar nice. effect. But what's also interesting is if you did that, but you also wanted the dry signal, you could uh, select instrument and it would combine the two. In your example, the 1176 could be after a guitar pedal and then before other guitar pedals as well? Well, if you put the guitar pedal in before the instrument in, yes, it okay. would be before yeah. that. And um, so you can get kind of creative with this of going out to multiple things, multiple amps, I always say if you're tracking and going out to a bunch of heads, always take that dry signal that comes out the line level, professional balance level output and run that dry track to Pro Tools because, uh, or to Pro Tools, or whatever you're recording on, whether right. it's tape or whatever, uh, as, a, as just a, a maintenance track, yeah. basically. And this has been used on a lot of records. It's really popular, like Tony Iommi uses it when he's recording. Um, he loves his PCP. Uh, Neil Young uses it. Um, a lot of engineers, big engineers use it. Bob Ezrin uses it. Um, but they like it because, like for instance, uh, there was an album, I forget what, it was a Marilyn Manson record. Like I forget the name of the album, but um, they, uh, they had done all the guitar tracks and stuff for the album. The record company listened to the record. We go, we like it, but we're not wild about the guitar sounds. And so they kept that dry track, which I insisted when I, I um, actually lent them the PCP, that they keep that dry track. And they had that dry track and went and totally changed all the guitar sounds without getting, I think, the guitar player with Twiggy back into... Uh, to play all the parts. They just went out and it was just easy. They did it in one day. We were able to just try different amps and get a more gritty guitar sound and boom. So it's a real simple way of doing it. And it takes a lot of the thinking out of it. Some, you can have a lot of ways to do that and overthink it, but this, the levels are set. So for instance, as long as that professional piece of gear or that DAW is set up for unity gain. When you come out of that professional line level out PI, you bring it back in, it's exactly like going directly through the thing onto the output. Yeah. As long as it's unity gain, all your levels are set. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you, on each one of these, you, have, you can select between an XLR input or an instrument input. That's the instrument input. And then you have the XLR A, B, and C that's in the rear, and you can select that there, and that converts it to a guitar level impedance output. Now you also have here uh, uh, a phase reverse and, a, and an earth lift. So, so when you're going out to multiple amps, 
if you didn't have that earth lift and ground isolation, chances are you're going to get a horrible ground loop and a lot of hum. Yeah. This way it goes from <laughs> to. <laughs> so, okay, so we have output A, B, and C. And then say for output A, you can choose any of these. Yeah. And then output B, any of these, right? Yeah. I'm just making sure I understand the grid here. Yeah. Okay. And it's really pretty simple, although it looks complicated. Yeah. Um, but you also have a mulch here, and uh, so that can go out to a, an amp too. Mind you, you don't have all this kind of uh, out to. You also can plug in in the rear if you have it all rack mounted in your guitar rig. Yeah. yeah. But, but it, you know, the key is that it's all transformer isolated. It sounds great. It gives you flexibility that you wouldn't have. And it's like the Cadillac at Guitar Splitters that has the extra, extra reamp outputs. And it's been around for 21 years now. And this guy gets, keeps on going. It's a workhorse that, you know, it's, it is a modern classic. Yeah. 21 years. <laughs> I need to buy you a drink. <laughs> now the pepper, we were asking yeah. about the uh -huh. pepper. Now the pepper is something I designed. So you would have, you could use it like at the front end of this if you wanted to give you a little more flexibility. Oh, nice. But basically, it's you have an instrument input with two paths. One is a dry path with a level control, and one is a, an effects path where you have an insert for your pedal board and an insert for pro gear. And the pro gear insert has a send and return level that you can set. And then it combines that all together and you have three outputs. You have a transformer isolated instrument output, you have a mic level transformer output, and a line level not transformer isolated output. So it's meant to be a hub for a guitar player who needs to send maybe to a mixer that he has by him, and he needs to send to front of house, he needs to send to his amp, and it ties in your pro gear, it ties in your pedal board, and, it, uh, and you can also, for instance, if you're a bass player, when you're using effects, quite often things get really mushy. And if you, you're able to dial in a little dry, which you have with that one path yeah. to it, dial in a little trout, you feel the, uh, the, the impulse of the, when you're hitting the string, you're hearing that you gotta let some of that through so it doesn't get lost in mush of the effects. Yeah. And, it, and that works well with the front end because you can take the um, the the line level output and feed that into the line level inputs of the PCP okay. and use that as a front end for the PCP. So they work well together. Nice, nice, very cool. So uh, the red eye. Now the red eye is you can use also. You have it, what's called an expansion out on this. And the red eye uses the same transformers on the output as the PCP. So if you run out of the expansion out of the PCP, which is a, the same as a direct out, but it's, it's on a separate TRS jack, you can run that out to the, the red eye and you can send that a mile down the road to, uh, to a guitar amp set up in you know, someone's bathroom. You know? But the red eye itself, though, is actually a active or passive DI and a reamp box in one unit that works simultaneously. So you can plug into it, plug into your DAW through it, plug out of it into an amp and listen through the whole chain and get your tone with that whole chain. And that way, when you go back to reamp, it will sound absolutely identical to what you laid down. So much so that when you um, take what's reamped out from what you recorded live out and you'd mic them both, if you if you combine them and flip the phase on one, they will completely cancel. Wow. So, because a lot of people have problems reamping and they go, it never sounds the same. I can show them with this, not only will it sound the same, it'll be so much the same that they completely canceled out. That's nuts. So how does this hook up? Because you said it's a DI and a reamp box. So, so is it? There's a two XLRs on the back. There's okay. a female and a male, and uh, they they both are transformer isolated. But you, well, when when I say you can't see the little red LED right now because I'm not feeding it anything. But right. you can either use phantom power to make it an active 
so it's a higher impedance front end, which actually sounds better with passive pickups. And on the rear is a passive input for for active pickups. So uh, okay. you can use it either way. But then there's an output that's a mic level output that you go through your DAW with the mic pre built in, go through, and if you have your DAW on input. You come back out of it, line level into the reamp in, and then out to the amp with the level trim to the amp. But there, you go select between DI or reamp out, and when you when you select reamp out, this jack becomes what's done through the DAW. Yeah. So it works similar to an insert, like an effects insert on a console. Yeah. But and so you have all that, and it makes it you know a lot simpler to use. Now a lot of people get it. And they don't set it up that way as far as setting up the whole chain. Uh -huh. And then they call me all confused, like, oh, I don't know how to get my levels right. Once I tell them, look, first time you use it, set up that whole chain. So, so you, get a, you get a feel for what your mic, mic, uh, mic gain level should be yeah. to make it so it's right through the whole chain. And yeah. once you get that, the feel of it, then you can go back and feel confident. Oh no, this is where I set the mic free when I'm recording this guitar. So when I come back, it's gonna sound identical to playing it. Okay, so, okay, so the DAW is basically in an effects uh, chain, basically. Well, you look at it, you can look at it that way, like, yeah. Like, so the pre, so basically. It's a DI and yeah. a reamp box, but since they're together, and they have it on an insert, you yeah. can, and they work both simultaneously. Yeah. You need to really set up that whole chain. Then you have the confidence <laughs> of knowing if you go back to the original amp, yeah. it'll sound identical to the way you played it. Yeah, because the way that we played it on recording day was going through that whole chain. Right. Like the it goes to the free, it goes to the dog, yeah. it comes it comes back out here. Yeah. And then on if we want to reamp, yeah, we have that we have that same signal. Yeah, and you can have the confidence knowing it's going to sound identical to how you played it. And it'll sound, no, it'll be, you know, as you plug into different amps, you go back to that original amp, it'll sound identical. That, that's really cool. I've never quite grasped, like, how to do it or how this hooks up, but right. that's, that's mind-blowing. Well, that's one of the reasons the Red Eye is one of the best values in reamp boxes. And I, I'm kind of glad it's been that way for so many years now because it really does work out better that way. Because Ramp and everybody goes, oh, it just never sounds the same. And this way I can set it up. Now, occasionally I run into a guy who's using some, you know, some of these guitars that are set up for metal, they'll have like a plus 20 output on the thing. Now, when it comes to something like that, I can't really help you. Uh, but, but those yeah. things are stupid. Yeah. But I mean, if you're taking a telly or a strat or you know, you know, for a bass like a basement or something, it it'll be it, you know, it loves that lead it up. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Well, thanks for walking me through kind of how you hook it up. That's kind of some of the yeah. A lot of what we do goes from the guitar world to the pro world and back again. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're doing there. But we do a lot more than that too. Yeah. But we won't get into that here because we'll keep you here all night. <laughs> well, thanks for telling me about it. It's right. really cool. Okay. Right on, right on.